is uh, this is Dan Hahn. He's one of our vascular surgeons here. He's with Mona and Joe, I believe. So we have a pretty interesting case that uh, Dr. Titana will talk to you about and then hopefully generate a little bit of discussion. Um, so we'll kind of turn it over to you, Joe. Fantastic. So we're presenting the case of a 66-year-old male with a history of CAD, previously treated with PCI. He had a left popliteal aneurysm that was stented in 2012. He was recently diagnosed with a left internal iliac artery aneurysm in addition to uh, other hepatic and aneurysmal vessels. Um, following an episode of progressive abdominal and pelvic pain that led to an imaging workup. Um, his additional medical and surgical history is listed here. Next slide. Never smoker. Family history is non-contributory. He has no known drug allergies. Medications are listed. His aspirin was last dosed this morning. Next slide. Uh, his office physical examination is presented here. Um, you can see he has palpable bilateral femoral and distal pulses in the lower extremities. Next slide. Pre-procedure laboratory evaluation is essentially within normal limits. Next slide. So um, on, the, on the left of the screen here, you can see um, inferenal abdominal aortic aneurysm, uh, ectatic, common iliacs, bilaterally, lots of tortuosity, and a very large 4.2 centimeter left internal iliac artery aneurysm. The 3D reconstruction on the right as well. Next slide. These are coronal, uh, sorry, these are representative images of the um, distal aorta and aneurysmal internal iliac artery. Next slide. So our assessment and plan, this is a 66-year-old male, history of left pop aneurysm that was stented. Um, he had this left internal iliac artery aneurysm identified on a recent imaging workup. He is for stage procedure. Today we will be embolizing the left internal iliac artery aneurysm. Um, and then in the future, he will have an endovascular AAA repair with a branched iliac device. Thanks for that presentation, Dan. You can hear me, right? Yep. It looks like I have Sabine here, and I saw Teresa. Um, so do you guys have any comments about how you guys would go about this? Because I know that Dan and I think very much alike because we train together. Um, so I want to hear what you guys think. Um, kind of a discussion that we had earlier was, that we definitely want to keep one of the hypos open and keep some collaterals open too on the other side. So uh, based on what I saw, definitely an IBD is is doable in this case, although it looks pretty pretty damn tough. So can we go back to the uh, CAT scan slide uh, that Joe had on his presentation? So Sabine, I want you to take a look at this one more time um, and look at the running angio on the left side. The, the biggest concern is that, you know, it's not like a standard IB in the sense that we got to now extend these limbs yeah. pretty far down into the hypos. That's tough. And on the right side, you could see that it's ectatic all the way down to its bifurcation. So we uh, are here at the first run. Um, you can see a very uh, tortuous aorta that's coming all the way down. You have some idea of kind of what things look like on the right. On the way out, we'll probably take a selective picture of the right hypogastric artery, but we started off by focusing just on the left. So here we are. So we're down onto the left side a little bit better. You can kind of see the origin. Um, you can't really see the origin of the left hypo very well. You could see what the outflow vessel looks like. But I think this is a very important point here. Like it's very uh, misleading. So you see a flow channel when you see, when you see this uh, angiogram versus on the CAT scan, you know that the aneurysm extends all the way down to the bifurcation point. So even though you do see a narrow flow channel, you know on your cross-sectional imaging that that is, in, in fact, aneurysmal. So we've selectively cannulated out that uh, outflow hypogastric branch. In order to get to where we are here, we had to use a 135 penumbra 5 French select. The 125 vert, we're way too short here. So we're kind of at this point. So yeah, we, so we were kind of talking about this before. And the size that we chose is a uh, 8. Uh, so the main internal iliac branch right before it bifurcates goes down to about you know 1 centimeter to slightly less than that. <coughs> And then the sub-branches of it are much smaller, about five, about five millimeters in length. So exactly as we talked about, we talked about using fully detachable coil all the way here, and then we'll, we're going to try to kind of just coil this all the way out. Um, fairly standard from this point on. I think, you know, the main discussion points were really, once again, how far do we take this out? I think we are, we are at the bifurcation point. I think this is where we're going to go. Let's open the next coil. Um, this is where we're going to go ahead and start our coil mass, and then we'll kind of coil this all the way back to the origin of the hypo. 
The tricky part will be kind of seeing the origin of the hypo. We haven't opened it up quite uh, that well yet, but that's what we'll work on. Do you, do you guys want to zoom in on the coil as you deliver it? Because I think a lot of people in the audience are not familiar with this coil. It's relatively new. And again, Dan, how did you size it again? You said that the the hypo was was 10 millimeters at this point, and which one did you yeah, pick? Yeah, the, the flow lumen, right as you got down, uh, turned into about 10 millimeters, and then the the branches on it that come off the anterior and posterior divisions were about 5 millimeters. So I wanted to pick a coil okay. that was going to sit inside my uh, the, the common iliac without the internal iliac without going into one of these branches. So if you can bring okay. the box and kind of zoom in on the box that we have. That looks pretty good uh, for the guess, first coil. I, that's correct. So Catherine is now doing a Vanna White for us, showing us the actual coil pack. This is the CX coil from Terumo, 8 millimeters by 20 centimeters. It has a hydrogel. So as soon as, soon as it starts to... Uh, as the longer it stays in there, we'll continue to swell and hopefully uh, reduce our flow a little bit better. Um, after this, after you put a couple of these in, I think we can pack with whatever. Um, so I think we'll pack the first two with these Terumos, and then we'll coil back a bit with, um, uh, when we're in the aneurysm stack, we may even use some detachable coils like uh, the interlocks. And then at the end, we'll come back to the Terumos that's fully detachable. Uh, we're going to be coiling back a lot because now... One of the concerns about just coiling back, so we have to coil this back to at least a little so that we cover the origin of the hypo a bit. If we've just knocked off the outflow for this four and a half centimeter internal uh, iliac aneurysm, the concern is that now the pressure will just continue to expand this mm -hmm. aneurysm sac and rupture in the one month that we're waiting. Read my mind just now. You see me pulling back the catheter to see whether or not our outflow is sufficiently kind of coiled. I think we are happy with it. I think this is probably where the, the exact reason why we push pull back here is to see if we can do that because now the task is to fill this aneurysm sac as much as possible. But we will kind of switch back to that for a bit until we get a little bit of coil mass within this aneurysm sac. And then we'll look to see the origin again uh, and then probably switch revert back to this. Um, Sorry, and say just for stability. Can you leave an O1 if you're going to switch? If you switch to O1A coils, can you just leave an O1-4 buddy wire and then just coil next to it? That's a great idea. Uh, some, I think, if we were going to go ahead and switch over, one of the ideas was to start off with the o one system, even from the O1-4 system, even from the get-go. I think that would have given a little bit more stability. But uh, we're here. We have the O3-5 catheter, so we'll continue. And if we do lose that stability, like you talk about, I think it's a great suggestion. So now this is the 035 20 by 40 interlock that's going in, and it's actually tracking very nicely we'll all the way more. throughout. So actually, you know, we've kind so, of changed our angle a bit here to make sure that we're not, especially with this much tortuosity, we just have to confirm that we're not anywhere near the uh, uh, external oleac, which we're not. And that actually delivered very nicely. So we'll pack a little bit more, a couple more of these. Another interlock? Uh, nothing in particular, more so than anything else in these patients. The biggest thing is um, kind of letting them know what the expectations are. Uh, we talked about complications and potential outcomes of uh, even a unilateral hypoembolization. And, you know, our, you know our, with this patient, we had a long discussion even at the start. A unilateral hypoembol still has about a 17% of erectile dysfunction, can be up as high as 25% for buttock claudication, so it's not benign what we're doing here. So a lot of the, you know, the post-op care or post-op follow-up with this patient kind of took place pre-op with a long-term, you know, long discussion about what they can expect post-op. Uh, we keep him here in the hospital for one day just to make sure he doesn't have any ischemic bowel or any kind of complications like this, which we don't anticipate for this patient, mm -hmm. given that he's got open profundus and IMA. That's not an issue, but uh, we always watch him and hydrate him overnight. I feel like we have a, like another 10 or 15 to go. Okay. Well, luckily we have more coils. <laughs> but more you just don't want to do. You don't want to be the person that's doing the embo net tomorrow with that with nothing on the shelf. Yeah. Hey Dan, how I long will you wait usually before you bring them back for the uh, the uh, branch device? A minimum of a month. Okay. And the real, the real thing is you're trying to see if you can get collaterals to develop um, in the interim or wait longer. I think that's a, a month is a good, uh, you know, like you said, give some time to develop collaterals. And to your point about admitting them, I don't usually admit them overnight, but it's 
that's a that's a good idea to monitor them. I haven't had any, you know, with the unilateral embo, you know, in my limited experience, I haven't had a lot of any complications so far. So when we say that we're waiting always. for about a month, one of the things that we're looking to see is really how bad is this uh, butt off claudication going to be? Like we talked about at the start of this case when we're talking about the planning, for this patient, we're going to be landing his contralateral IBE pretty far in uh, in order for it to gain seal of the ectatic aneurysm as well. So, you know, whenever you go a little bit deeper into the hypo, you run the risk of that stent, not, uh, the stent patency becoming a little bit lower. So we're really, you know, if he ends up developing buttock claudication with just the unilateral embolization, we probably would extend that out even further rather than just one month which is why it's important for us to try to embolize this now as far back to the origin as possible um, rather than just kind of coiling the outflow. This is it. Uh, so the 119 wouldn't have reached. So initially we had a 125 guide, and it's that mm -hmm. and the common iliac origin. So what you're seeing here is a 135 to number of five French catheter that's nearly hubbed. And you can kind of see what it's starting to do here with the interlock coil. It's starting to kick me out a bit. So I'm going to retrieve this coil, take a shot, and see where we are and better position ourselves. But yeah, the length was the issue, Nora. They had the delivery system again. I have nothing to add, but uh, thank you so much for the lively discussion. I think it's uh, always interesting. Uh, once again, this is Mona and Joe that we're working together with. So thank you from room one. Uh, see you next year at Tree.